Okay, so I want to talk uh, just about prophecy and some things that happened uh, on Sunday. So Sunday was a prophetic day. It was a good day. It was kind of like a, a Holy Spirit bomb hit the church, which is great. Uh, a lot of the words were, were very good. But there was a word that was given to my wife concerning like they were praying over her, like binding a tormenting spirit uh, or something like that, having to do with sleep. And I promise you, <laughs> in 13 years of marriage, I don't ever remember my wife having any issues sleeping. When we go to sleep, we're so tired uh, that we're almost dead. Uh, we're like alive with a heartbeat, but sleeping. I almost slept through an earthquake. And so we have our own issues in life, just like anyone. But um, there's no tormenting spirit affecting our sleep, uh, Sarah and I, at least. So I just wanted to say that when people prophesy, they prophesy in part. We know in part, we see in part. Someone could give a great prophetic word, but it could have something in it that is not great, that is slightly off. Because the, pro the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus, which is accurate. However, it comes through our human soul. And if our human soul is damaged and unhealed or immature, or if we're striving or trying to perform or we feel pressure to prophesy, sometimes we add to it. Sometimes we interpret it. And so it could be slightly off. But that doesn't mean the other things that were said uh, were incorrect. That's why you need discernment. So I wanted to use that as a teaching moment. And I also want to do some brief uh, teaching on the prophetic. Okay. The primary purpose of prophecy is to reveal Christ. So we see that in Genesis uh, 3.15, where it's the first prophecy. It's God talking about God saying that there is a seed that's going to crush the serpent's head. And that is a prophecy uh, that Jesus is going to win the victory through suffering. Matthew Henry, the biblical commentator, said that when Jesus' feet were nailed to the tree, uh, his heel was bruised and Satan's head was crushed. So that fulfilled Genesis 3.15. The secondary purpose uh, of prophecy is to reveal um, his redemptive plan for humanity and to build faith to participate with his plan. And so Jesus in John says, I have told you these things beforehand so that when they happen, you may believe. So prophecy is also a faith building uh, experience. So Jesus is glorified. Um, the saints are edified and faith is built and God's plan is revealed, which builds faith uh, in us and, and to participate with that plan. So that's that's another thing. Now, the Apostle Paul is the one who sets the standard for the prophetic, how the prophetic should flow and how it should be ordered in the New Testament church. So many times normal pastors are freaked out by the prophetic because many times they don't have grace to pastor the prophetic, but apostolic people and apostles have grace to pastor the prophetic because the church starts with Christ as the chief cornerstone, but then the foundation of churches are apostles and prophets and apostles are the ones who set order and keep order and establish order. And so uh, they, the apostle Paul wrote more about prophecy than any uh, prophet in the Bible. And so he's the one who gives the new Testament paradigm for prophecy, the order, the flow, the accountability, what is the purpose uh, and all that stuff. So that is really important. Now in first Corinthians 13, nine, it says, we know in part, see in part and prophesy in part. This is a real statement of just extreme humility because Paul saw the risen Jesus with his, cool. his natural eyes, like his literal eyes, his retinas were literally shut down because his eyes couldn't handle the glory and the light that emanates off of the son of God. And so imagine a guy who sees Jesus and he's so humble to say, we know in part, see in part and prophesy in part. It, it's like that the attitude of the prophetic has to be one of humility, one of accountability and one of a confident apprehension. In, in other words, we're confident in the Lord, but we're apprehensive in ourselves that we, we don't want to misspeak and we don't want to add to or try to interpret what the Lord is giving us, but we want to give it as we're getting it and then ask questions as we do to see if that makes sense to the people we're speaking to, which in the school that we'll do, we will, we will talk about the mechanics and the dynamics of that and discernment 
and 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 we will really get into some of those things which we're not going to get into tonight uh tonight he paul also in first corinthians 14 21 desires that all would learn to prophesy so prophecy is not for the special people it's not just for pastors or prophets but it's for all of god's people that they would learn to speak um on the lord's behalf and um what's what's important is that it was holy men in 2 Peter 1 21 who were moved by the Holy Spirit and prophesied. So a holy life is essential to be led by the Holy Spirit. And so that is really, really important. And so if we're going to be speaking on the Lord's behalf, our life should be clean uh, morally, ethically. There, there should be a holiness about our life. And I'm not talking about like everyone has to be perfect, but if your life isn't set apart for God, you shouldn't be representing God. You should actually learn to order your life correctly, order your family correctly before you step out and speak about something that you're not really living and it's not really intrinsically who you are and uh, what you're actually about. We are told uh, to pursue love, not prophecy. This is 1 Corinthians 14. Um, prophecy must be motivated by love. If it's not motivated by love, it's unclean. Many people are pursuing power and pursuing signs and pursuing uh, manifestations instead of pursuing love. So the scripture teaches us to pursue love and desire prophecy, not pursue prophecy. <laughs> so it's just, it's very important when you're pursuing love, the gifts pursue you because God makes all of his grace available for you to be able to reach people and represent him to people well, uh, powerfully truthfully, honestly, and lovingly uh, with integrity. So this is important. Now we prophesy from faith, but that flows through the soul. So if the soul is damaged, the prophecy will be damaged too. Now we're, we also need to learn to test the spirit because when I test the spirit, then I'm activating the gift of the discerning of spirits. So that's one. So that the spirit has to be te tested and the spirit is kind of like, what is the motive? Um, the word has to be uh, tested, like was the word accurate and the messenger. So there's three levels of testing. Paul talks about that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophets, plural. So there has to be a plurality of prophetic people. That's why you saw prophet Jim. He was uh, traveling with a few prophets, which is a good thing, especially for young people in the prophetic. He really doesn't need them there but they need to be there for them. <laughs> um, and so that's that's really important. Um, sometimes prophetic people, in sometimes just in learning the prophetic, we make mistakes just like in any other thing that we do. So it's okay to make a mistake. It's not okay to stay wrong. And so if if we make a mistake, we just say, hey, I, I think I missed it on that. No problem. No, There's no hard feelings. There's no, um, you know, it's not the old covenant. You're not going to be stoned. Uh, it, it's the new covenant. Paul desires people to learn to prophesy and in learning to prophesy, just like in anything you learn, you're going to make mistakes. And so the question is, is there humility? Is there accountability? Is there teachability? And when you're confronted about something that you did or said that's wrong, do you respond correctly? And if you don't, you just won't grow. And so that it's just you, you just stunt your own growth if you don't respond to correction uh, correctly, whether that's prophecy whether that's lifestyle, whether that's doctrine, whether that's uh, protocols, relationship issues, money issues. When, when God brings something to you, if you don't respond correctly, you stunt your own growth. So that's that's just uh, plain and simple. So now there's so many things that um, happen through through prophecy. And a lot of these things, I can't um, I can't really get into them for the sake of time uh, tonight, but we will go over them more. Um, deeply uh, in the prophetic school that we're going to do. But we need to be good stewards of the word that God has given us. So if you get a prophetic word, if it doesn't resonate with you, if it doesn't, if it doesn't bear witness with you, no problem. But if you get something that really does bear witness, you need to write it down. Um, many times I've written prophetic cards, uh, prophetic words down on index cards, and I keep them before me on my desk, similar to maybe the goals that I have for this year or my to-do list, things that I'm trying to do today. Uh, I always want what is important before my eyes. 
And I want to stay cognizant of the important things that God has said to me, that God has done, things that I'm doing, things that I'm trying to do. Um, I always want to keep what is important at the forefront of my um, awareness and uh, my reality. So anyway, if you got a word that uh, didn't bear witness with you, sometimes it, it's something for later. Um, and other times it's just people make mistakes. And so we have to handle that with grace. Now, if someone is is saying something for the wrong reasons, uh, that's a whole different thing. And, and that's not on you. That's on me. I'm the one who's uh, responsible to handle that. But what I would say is if you got a good word from the Lord, write it down, pray about it, pray into it, ask the Lord how to partner with it. Like, for example, if you get a prophetic word, God says you're going to go to the nations. Well, that's really amazing. And I'm so happy for you, but you need a passport or you're probably not going anywhere. So there's just practical things um, that are necessary to partner with the words that you get, because we want to be good stewards of the word, whether that's scripture, whether that's something that God speaks to our heart, whether that's something that is uh, spoken to us through a vessel uh, of honor, someone who is uh, maybe a senior in the ministry like Jim or someone who's accompanying him, who's still learning. Sometimes people feel pressure to prophesy, or if they give something short, they add to it uh, in immaturity, trying to make something more uh, of it than it than it was. One of the things that uh, was really good about um, Jim is he's very seasoned. He's mature in the prophetic. So he was giving a word to uh, Deborah, but he didn't just give a word to Isaac simply because that's, you know, you know, her husband, if he didn't have a word, he didn't give a word. And that's a very, very important principle, because as you grow in your in gifts and in favor and different things, many times people feel pressure to perform. And uh, that is very, very unhealthy um, when you're striving and you're trying to make something out of nothing. That lets me know that's a self-seeking motive, not love, because um. Yeah, so that so that's that we've been through this, we've done this a long time, and we've we've taught this, and so we understand uh the the pitfalls and um and the different things that can happen and, and the messes that can be made, and also the great blessing that can come through the prophetic gifts that are to reveal Christ, edify the church, build the church up, and kind of cast vision uh for who we're becoming in the kingdom and for the plans that God has. So that's kind of like a 101 on uh prophecy and we'll get more into this another time if this was helpful to you please share it bless you guys